This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create this vector pyramid graphic using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left-hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll close out of this and get started. The first thing we will do in Inkscape is set the view to custom, and then we're going to want to zoom in at 100%, so zoom in at 1 to 1. Then we'll open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button right here and make sure you have last selected chosen from the drop down and then we will go to our uh, edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu and have that open as well so the first thing we're going to do is create a square so come over to the squares and rectangles tool and then just hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfect square like that and then we're going to go back to our select tool up here we're going to take the opacity of this and just drop this down about in half and then I'm going to click this a second time to get the rotation handles and I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag this around until the corners are going up and down perfectly like that. And what we could do now is let's click on this again to get back to the scaling handles and I'm just going to take this bottom arrow down here and I'm going to move that up maybe about that much. So we'll put it up to there and then we can click off of the graphic to deselect it. Let's go to our Bezier pen by clicking on this or just pressing B on the keyboard. And we're going to turn on our snap to cusp nodes. So uh, let's turn that on. And we're going to start, we're going to snap the cursor onto this bottom corner right here and then click and hold control on the keyboard and bring this line straight up to about there and then click. And then you could let go of control and bring this line over to this corner, click and then back to the starting point to create that shape. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Let's start this line. Let's start the, snap the cursor onto this corner and then snap it onto this corner and then to this corner and then connect it back to the starting point. And then we can go back to our select tool. Uh, we could turn off our snap to cusp nodes for now. And let's take this black uh, little square diamond type of shape here in the background and click on that and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to click and drag over both of these. Let's turn them red and let's get rid of that black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X down here. And let's hold shift and click on this red piece to the right, to the left to deselect that. And with this one selected, we'll just turn this one blue for now. And then let's click and drag over both of them and bring the opacity down about in half like that. And then we can click off of that to deselect everything. So what we're going to do next is let's click on this red shape and then right click that and go to duplicate. And we'll turn that green. And then we'll duplicate it again by right clicking it and going to duplicate. And we will turn this one blue. And then I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this blue copy up to about maybe about that far. Maybe a little less than that. Maybe about we want it to be about that thickness right there. And then we could hold shift on the keyboard and click on the green object below it and go to path, difference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this green piece up to about here. And then I'm going to right click it and go to duplicate and then move this one up. We're holding control the whole time we're moving it so that it goes straight up on the vertical plane instead of going off to the left or right a little bit. So hold control, move this straight up to about there. Gonna move this one down a little bit actually. Have them, have them about spaced out about that much. And then we could hold shift and click on both of those green stripes and unify them together by going to path, union. And then let's click on this red shape. And we'll right click that and go to duplicate. Hold shift in the keyboard and click on that green, those two green shapes we just created and go to path, intersection. And then we could right click that go to duplicate and then we're going to flip that horizontally with this button flip selected objects horizontally and then hold shift and click on this blue shape and click on the button over here that says align left edges and it's going to put it over there on that side so uh, once we've done that we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything and what we could do now is we could click on this series of green shapes and then hold shift and click on this red object beneath it and go to path, difference, and then path, break apart. So that we have three different pieces here now. 
I'm going to do the same thing over here. Click on this green object, hold shift, click on the blue shape, go to path, difference, and then path, break apart, and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So what we'll do next is let's turn our snap to cusp nodes back on. And then let's click this red shape in the middle and hold shift and click this blue shape in the middle. And with them both selected, we'll right click it, go to duplicate, and then go to path, union, and then we could turn that green and flip that vertically with this button up here, flip selected objects vertically. And then we're gonna take this object and we're gonna snap the corners. We're gonna snap this corner, these corners together like that, just like that. And then we're gonna do the same thing down here. So let's click on this shape, hold shift, click on that shape, right click, duplicate, path, union, turn that green, flip it vertical, and then snap the corners up top there like that. And then what we could do is let's, um, let's grab our Bezier pen, you click the button or just press B on the keyboard. And we're going to snap the cursor onto this, these middle corners right here and then click and snap it onto this corner and click and then snap it onto the corner of the green shape there and click and snap it onto this corner and then back to the starting point. And then we're going to turn that, uh, we'll just turn that black for now and we'll hold shift and click the X to get rid of the black outline. We'll take the opacity and bring that down about in half. And then we can go back to the select tool and click the button that says lower selection to the bottom. And then we can take that green shape right there and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And we're gonna do the same thing right here. Let's go back to our Bezier pen, press B on the keyboard, snap to this corner, then to this corner, and then to this green corner over here, and back to the starting point. And again, we're gonna turn that black. We're gonna get rid of the, um, the black outline by holding shift and clicking the X bring the opacity down about in half. And then we go back to our select tool and send that to the bottom. And we can take this green shape and just delete that because we are done with that. So um, what we'll do next is let's turn off the snap to cusp nodes and then let's click and drag over this entire graphic and bring the opacity of it all the way up. So what we're gonna do now is let's click on this top blue triangle right here and we're gonna make this yellow. I'll pick that shade right there maybe. And then I'm gonna click on this one to the left, the red one. I'm gonna make that the same shade of yellow, but then I'm gonna come over here to the fill tab under the HSL tab, and I'm gonna slide the H column over to the left a little bit to make it slightly darker. And we're gonna do the same thing down here. We're gonna click on this one. Uh, we're gonna make this red. This one's already red, so we can just click on that and make that a darker shade of red. And for down here, we'll use uh, blue, but a different shade. So um, <clears throat> come down here to a color picker and I'll pick a nice shade of blue that I'd like to use. Maybe that. And then I'll click on this red object and give it the same shade. Uh, I'll get the dropper out by pressing F7 on the keyboard. That gets us the dropper tool. And then we can just click on the color we want it to be and it'll make it that color. And then we can go back to the select tool and slide the L column over to the left to make that slightly darker. And now we can go and let's click off of it to deselect everything. Let's give each of these a gradient. So let's click this first one that we colored in and let's give that a linear gradient. And we'll press G on the keyboard to get our, our gradient tool. And we'll click on this stop to the right and bring the opacity up and then come over to the L column and slide that to the right to make that lighter. And I'm going to zoom in on this right now by pressing plus on the keyboard to zoom in. And I'm going to take this node and put this towards the bottom, the lighter node, and take the darker node and put that towards the top like that. Towards the edge maybe, like that. And then we'll do the same thing down here. Let's click on this red object and let's give that a linear gradient. And we'll click on this node to the right, bring the opacity all the way up. And then click on this node over here to the left, and let's slide the L column over to the right to make that lighter. I'm just gonna uh, put this node down here, put this one up here, and we'll do the same thing down here. I'll click on that blue shape, give that a linear gradient. Um, click on the node to the right, bring the opacity up, go back to this node, slide the L column over to the right, 
and then bring this node down here and then put this node up here. And what we could do now is let's click on this black shape up top over here and let's give that a linear gradient. But let's go to the drop down and find the, the linear gradient that we already made for the blue for the red shade and we'll just click on that. And we'll go back to the select tool. I'm actually gonna have to move this up one step. So click the button that says raise selection one step because it's cert it's currently below this black shape, which is not good. So press that once and there you have it. That's that's fixed. So um, let's go to the select, I mean, let's go back to the gradient tool, just uh, press G on the keyboard. And we'll take the darker shade and put this over here and take the lighter shade and bring that straight down. Maybe like that. You know, what? maybe we'll put the lighter shade over here and then this shade over here. We'll try it this way. I forgot the way I did it in the thumbnail. What did I do in the thumbnail? Oh, you know what? I just used a darker shade than all of it. All right, so let's go to the select tool. Sorry about that. Let's just make this red again. And we'll slide the L column over to the left to make it darker like that. And we'll do the same thing over here. Let's click on this black square. Press F7 on the keyboard to get the dropper. We'll click on this portion to make it that shade. And come over to the L column and slide this over to the left to make that darker. And now we're going to have to go create gradients for these three objects right here. So let's press G on the keyboard to get back to our gradient tool. And we'll click on this, this uh, orange shape linear gradient. Um, click on this side, bring the opacity up and come over to this side. And instead of sliding it to the right, we're going to slide it to the left to make it darker like that. We'll put this node down here, put this node up here. And we'll do the same thing to this one. Click on that linear gradient, uh, let's click that stop, bring the opacity all the way up, and we'll take this one, make that darker, like that, that's pretty good, and then we could finally do this one down here, so um, linear gradient, click that one, bring the opacity all the way up, and then this one, make that one darker. And that one's actually pretty good position just how it is. So maybe I can put that there. And I should do the trick. So let's press, um, let's go back to our select tool and let's click on this yellow shape then hold shift and click on this other yellow shape and right click them and go to duplicate and go to path union. And then we'll turn them, we'll turn that black and bring the opacity down about in half and I'm going to hold control and click and drag this down about this much. And then I'll click on this, this red shape here, right click, duplicate, hold shift and click on that black object we just created and go to path intersection. And I'm going to lower that one step. I'm going to click that a few times actually to get that beneath those yellow shapes. And that's going to make for um, a shadow because we're creating this as if the pieces are falling onto each other like that. So there's a little shadow it's casting. And all right, that's pretty good. And we'll do the same thing over here. Let's click on this object, hold shift, click on the other one next to it, right click, duplicate, path, union. We'll turn that black and bring the opacity down about in half again. And then we'll hold control and click and drag this one down about that much. Click on this blue shape, right click, duplicate, hold shift, click on the black object and go to path, intersection. And then lower that beneath the red objects. I have to click that a few times. I'm gonna take the opacity and bring this down a lot more. And I'd say that's pretty good. So let's press one on the keyboard to zoom back out and click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So we're, we're almost pretty much done. I just gonna have to add a few more details to this thing to make it pop a little more. So. Let's go back to our Bezier pen by pressing B on the keyboard and we'll turn on our snap to cusp nodes. We'll turn that back on and we're going to snap the cursor up to the corner up top and then click and then bring the line going about halfway through these shapes on the right, maybe about that much and then click and then just bring this over here, click and then back to the starting point like that. And then we go to our select tool and let's click this blue, this little blue uh, arm right there and hold shift, click the red and the yellow, so we have all three selected. And we'll right click, go to duplicate, and then we'll go to path, 
union and then we could hold shift in the keyboard and click on that shape that we just drew and go to path intersection and we're going to turn that white and hold shift in the keyboard and click on the X to get rid of the black outline and I'm gonna take the opacity of this and drop this down a little bit just to give it the um, this creates kinda of like the illusion of like a little um, reflective glare I guess. So we're gonna do the same thing over here on this side only we're gonna use black to create a shadow instead of a shine so let's go back to our bezier pen we'll press B on the keyboard we'll snap the cursor to this top corner and click and then bring the line about halfway through here maybe about that much and then click and then bring this line all the way around and snap it back to the starting point point. and then we'll go back to our select tool click on this yellow shape hold shift the red and then the blue right click duplicate we'll go to path union and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the shape that we just drew and go to path intersection and then we could turn that white actually no we're gonna turn that black and hold shift and click on the X to get rid of the outline and I'm gonna take the opacity of this and bring that down a lot as well maybe about that much and one final step as I'm just gonna put a little bit of a glare at the corner of this object right here going down the middle so let's create another rectangle let's go to the rectangles and squares tool and let's just hold control and shift and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfect square i will go back to our select tool let's click this a second time to get the rotation handles and hold control and rotate this around until the corners are going upright and then we're going to take this corner and snap it onto the top of that corner let me bring the opacity of this up a little bit so we can see it and then let's click this again to get our scaling handles I'm just going to scale this in a little bit and you know what we're going to have to put it back in the corner there snap it back into the corner and let's take this bottom arrow and just drag this down drag that down a lot. I'm going to zoom out actually. Just press minus on the keyboard to zoom out. I'm going to drag this down a lot. Maybe um maybe that maybe even that much. So, let me zoom back in to show you why I did that because we're going to use this triangle right here that goes along this edge and we want this thing to be thin. We want it to be thin up top and then gradually get wider, but not too wide. So, let's click on this blue shape and then hold shift, click on that blue shape. And while, while still holding shift, we'll click on this red shape, and then this red shape, and then this yellow shape, and then this orange shape. And with all of that selected, we're going to duplicate that. And instead of right-clicking and going to duplicate, you could just hold control and press D on the keyboard, and that'll duplicate it. So uh, control D to duplicate it, and go to path, union, and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on that black shape, and go to path, intersection. Then we could turn that white and bring the opacity down more. We don't want that to be too, we don't want that to stand out too much. It won't quite look right. And we could turn off our snap to cusp nodes. Uh, let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Click and drag over the whole thing and group it together. And you could hold control and shift and scale it up or down however you'd like. And that should do it. That's how you can create this vector pyramid graphic using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.